Welcome back, everyone. Today, we delve into a dark chapter of recent history, a chapter marked by fear, violence, and the chilling specter of global terrorism. This is a story that has left an indelible mark on the collective consciousness of humanity, a story that continues to reverberate through the corridors of power and the streets of our cities. This is the story of Al-Qaeda, an organization that for decades cast a long shadow over the world. Founded in the late 1980s by Osama bin Laden, Al-Qaeda quickly grew from a small group of militants into a global network of terror. Its name became synonymous with fear, its actions a grim reminder of the lengths to which extremism can go. We will explore its origins, its crimes, its influence, and the factors that led to its rise and eventual decline. Al-Qaeda's roots can be traced back to the Soviet-Afghan War where bin Laden and his followers first took up arms. The group's ideology was shaped by a mix of radical interpretations of Islam and a fierce opposition to Western influence in the Muslim world. This is not just a tale of destruction, it is a study of the complexities of extremism, the motivations behind terror, and the enduring fight against it. We will hear from experts who have spent their careers studying terrorism, from those who have fought on the front lines against it, and from the victims whose lives have been forever changed by its horrors. It is a journey into the heart of darkness, aiming to shed light on a phenomenon that continues to shape our world. The aftermath of Al-Qaeda's attacks can be seen in the devastated landscapes of war-torn regions, in the faces of those who mourn their lost loved ones, and in the heightened security measures that have become a part of daily life. Join me as we dissect the anatomy of terror, examining the rise and fall of Al-Qaeda and its impact on the global stage. We will look at how the group managed to evade capture for so long, the international efforts to dismantle its network, and the ongoing threat it poses even after the death of its leader. Our exploration will be unflinching and honest, seeking to understand the intricacies of this complex and multifaceted issue. We will delve into the psychological and socio-political factors that drive individuals to join such groups, the propaganda used to recruit and radicalize, and the global response to this ever-evolving threat. Let us begin. The roots of Al-Qaeda can be traced back to the late 1980s, a period marked by intense geopolitical upheaval and conflict. Amidst the ashes of the Soviet-Afghan War, a brutal and protracted struggle that left deep scars on the region and its people. The conflict, a fierce battle between the Soviet-backed Afghan government and various Mujahideen rebel groups, attracted foreign fighters from across the Muslim world. These fighters, driven by a mix of religious fervor and political motivations, saw the war as a holy struggle, or jihad, against an atheist superpower. Among them was a wealthy young Saudi named Osama bin Laden, who would later become one of the most infamous figures in modern history. Initially motivated by a desire to fight against Soviet communism, bin Laden became a key figure in the resistance movement. His wealth and connections allowed him to support the Mujahideen in significant ways, providing not just financial backing but also logistical support and strategic guidance. He helped to finance and organize the Mujahideen, earning a reputation as a skilled and charismatic leader. His ability to inspire and mobilize fighters was instrumental in the Mujahideen's efforts against the Soviet forces. As the war drew to a close, bin Laden and his followers sought new battlegrounds for their jihad. The end of the Soviet-Afghan war did not mark the end of their struggle. Rather, it was the beginning of a new phase. They began to look beyond Afghanistan, identifying new enemies and new causes to rally around. Their focus shifted from Soviet communism to what they perceived as the enemies of Islam, particularly the United States and its allies. This shift was driven by a growing sense of anti-American and anti-Western sentiment in the Middle East, fueled by various political and social grievances. In 1988, Al-Qaeda was officially formed, this marked the formalization of a network that had been gradually taking shape over the previous years, as bin Laden and his associates sought to create a more organized and cohesive movement. The name, meaning the base in Arabic, reflected bin Laden's vision of a global network of militants united by a radical interpretation of Islam and a shared hatred for the West. This vision was not just about fighting battles. It was about creating a new world order based on their ideological beliefs. The organization quickly attracted recruits from across the Middle East, Africa, and Asia. 
These recruits were drawn to Al-Qaeda's message of violent jihad and its promise of a global Islamic caliphate. They came from diverse backgrounds, but they were united by a common cause and a shared sense of purpose. Al-Qaeda's propaganda was highly effective in spreading its message and recruiting new members. It called for a global Islamic caliphate and promoted the idea of violent jihad as a means to achieve this goal. This message resonated with many disaffected individuals who were looking for a sense of belonging and a way to fight against perceived injustices. Training camps were established in various locations where recruits were trained in guerrilla warfare, explosives, and other combat skills. These camps became the breeding grounds for a new generation of militants who were prepared to carry out attacks around the world. Over the years, Al-Qaeda carried out numerous attacks, leaving a trail of destruction and loss in its wake. The impact of these attacks was felt globally as the organization sought to spread fear and chaos in pursuit of its goals. In response, nations around the world have come together to combat the threat posed by Al-Qaeda. This has led to increased international cooperation in intelligence sharing, military operations, and efforts to counter the group's propaganda and recruitment efforts. Despite significant setbacks, including the death of Osama bin Laden, Al-Qaeda remains a potent force. The fight against terrorism continues as the world grapples with the ongoing threat posed by this and other extremist groups. Yet amidst the darkness, there is also hope. Communities around the world are rebuilding and standing strong against the forces of terror. The global unity in the fight against terrorism serves as a testament to the resilience and determination of humanity to overcome such challenges. The world first became truly aware of Al-Qaeda's deadly capabilities in the 1990s. This period marked the beginning of a new era in global terrorism, one that would see the rise of a group whose name would become synonymous with fear and destruction. The group carried out a series of increasingly brazen attacks targeting American interests and civilians alike. These attacks were not just random acts of violence, they were meticulously planned operations designed to send a clear message to the world. Al-Qaeda wanted to demonstrate its power and its ability to strike at the heart of its enemies. The 1993 World Trade Center bombing was one of the first major attacks that brought Al-Qaeda into the global spotlight. The explosion in the underground parking garage of the North Tower was intended to bring down both towers and cause massive casualties. Although the plan did not succeed as intended, it resulted in six deaths and over a thousand injuries, highlighting the group's deadly intent. The 1998 U.S. Embassy bombings in Kenya and Tanzania further showcased Al-Qaeda's growing capabilities. These coordinated attacks killed over 200 people and injured thousands more, demonstrating the group's ability to execute large-scale operations simultaneously in different locations. The bombings were a stark reminder of the group's reach and its willingness to inflict mass casualties. The 2000 attack on the USS Cole in Yemen marked a terrifying escalation in Al-Qaeda's campaign of terror. A small boat loaded with explosives rammed into the side of the naval destroyer, killing 17 American sailors and injuring dozens more. This attack underscored the group's tactical ingenuity and its ability to strike high-profile military targets. These attacks, each carefully planned and executed, demonstrated the group's global reach and its willingness to use violence on an unprecedented scale. Al-Qaeda's operations were not confined to any single region, they spanned continents affecting countries around the world. The group's training camps produced a new generation of terrorists, indoctrinated with a radical ideology and trained in the art of warfare. The attacks sent shockwaves through the international community, marking a turning point in the fight against terrorism. Governments around the world were forced to reevaluate their security measures and develop new strategies to combat this emerging threat. International cooperation became essential as countries shared intelligence and resources to prevent future attacks. Al-Qaeda, once a relatively obscure group operating in the shadows, had emerged as a major threat to global security. Its leaders, including Osama bin Laden, became infamous figures, their faces and names known worldwide. The group's ability to inspire and coordinate attacks made it a formidable adversary, one that required a concerted effort to counter. The world was forced to confront a new kind of enemy, one that operated outside the bounds of traditional warfare 
and was willing to use any means necessary to achieve its goals. This new reality required a shift in military and intelligence tactics as nations adapted to the challenges posed by a decentralized and ideologically driven foe. The fight against Al-Qaeda would shape global security policies for years to come, as the world grappled with the enduring threat of terrorism. Thank you for watching. Consider a subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one.